Good morning, everyone. We're uh, approaching the afternoon and lunch soon, but uh, we wanted to get uh, our uh, concurrent session part of the day going with a bang. Um, lots of great sessions throughout, but um, uh, in here we're doing the folio roadmap and prioritization update. Um, doing that today are um, some members of the prioritization and roadmap uh, group team, what are we called? Working group? Working group um, in the folio project. Um, and um, I'm going to start us off talking a little bit about um, our group and the charge that we've been working through. Um, and then more importantly, um, Kristen's going to take us through some 18 month roadmap uh, visualizations and and some information of how we got those. And um, uh, and Jen's going to be looking at some more, the basically a more detailed look at what's going on in the project, uh, sort of a like short term view of what uh, what's being uh, what's being done in the releases coming up. Um, and Martina's going to talk about prioritization to get us that long, try to get us that longer view um, and where we are with that. And I'll wrap us up with some challenges that we've faced, some some of them throughout and some of them recently occurring things, and some next steps for the team work. And further ado, oh, let's start. Organization and Roadmap Working Group uh, currently consists of these members, um, many of which are here. Uh, and Charlotte Witt is also with us. Um, she'll be uh, not presenting today, but we'll help as we got Q&A at the end. Um, Sharon Wilds Young from Lehigh, uh, recently retired from Lehigh, and um, she hung on for a couple meetings maybe after that, but she feels like actually being retired, and she is here at Wolfgang, so. Um, and uh, Deborah Howell from Cornell University is another member as well. One of the things we're going to talk about later is ship, and can we find more or others? What, we, what do we want to do with that? Um, and our charge is to manage a holistic process for developing, reviewing, adjusting, and communicating the Folio Community Roadmap, or Roadmap, if you will. Um, and there are several components of that. There's a little more to the charge on the wiki. Um, I did not include the link here, but you can find it on the folio, uh, wiki.folio.org. Um, and uh, But among these components, uh, what we're going to talk about today is progress in some of these areas and maybe some future thinking in some of these, uh, some of the others, but around feature prioritization, how do we know what's the most important to the most institutions or to, uh, or the most just to drive folio in the future. Um, identifying themes and sub themes, what are ways to describe the functionality that folio needs in ways that are sort of digestible and, and understandable by the people that need to make some decisions around those. Um, maintaining a roadmap that includes those priorities. Um, clarifying roadmap intersections with release planning, testing, and release schedule. Um, I don't know if we're talking much about that today, but we are, um, but that's trying to hit where, where does this roadmap meet some of the other planning and sort of resourcing parts of the project. Um, trying to develop some clarity on what's targeted for development and what's not. There are a lot of ideas out there of things people would like to have in Folio, things that are being worked on, things that are not being worked on. And um, among our goals is to try to make sure that's uh, clear. Um, articulate who's responsible for identifying priorities. Um, that's some uh, work that we'll be talking about a bit and uh, has some future work ahead of us. Integrate information about non-community development efforts into road, the roadmap and priorities. It's an interesting piece there, and we've had a few discussions around this. It's all community development, really, if it's feeding into Folio itself, whether that's um, EBSCO developers or other, uh, other vendors in the mix developing things or developers at libraries or some random person who decides they want to develop a Folio app. Like, this is, it's all part of the greater community, and we're... Um, so exactly how we are interpreting this bullet is to try to get um, all those priorities and, and the roadmap aspects that are out there in some of these disparate teams together so we can see it um, as a full project. 
um, and then generate and update documentation and visualizations for to help people understand what they're seeing in the roadmap, what they might not never see in a roadmap, like what it means. And I'm gonna pass it on to uh, Kristen to jump into the 12 month roadmap, 18 month roadmap. All right, thank you. So I'm just going to check our chat. Um, so it looks like everybody can hear us. We're uh, playing around with our own technical setup. I had some presenter notes that I have no idea what they say now. So hopefully I'll remember them well enough. Uh, and I do just want to stress that one of the things as we have been working on a new roadmap that we've been trying to do is to consider the community in the broadest sense. So whomever is developing Folio, and we have tried to represent all these different teams, but we may have missed something. And so this is an opportunity if you're out there and you're like, hey, I'm doing development work and what you have up there doesn't actually reflect what we're doing is incomplete, is inaccurate, is just needs a little clarification. We, are, we would love to hear from you and we would love to get that information. So let us go on. So these are going to be the releases covered um, that we're talking about in these 18 month time period. Uh, as many people know, there are approximately three releases that come out for Folio in a year, but um, the Poppy release got a little bit of a longer release time, which then pushed back dates of these other potentially upcoming releases. And, um, and so future dates are not, um, they're not set with Definity, but the release management group has set a date for Poppy of um, November 20th. And then uh, our next flower release, which would happen is Quisnalia. Then we have Ramsoms and we have Sunflower. And then lastly, uh, in 2025, um, we have Trillium. Now, I did not inter I did not make up the cone of uncertainty. We just updated the graphic a little bit because um, Jesse found this uh, sort of hurricane themed cone of uncertainty. We, yeah, we wanted to have party hats here, but we didn't get those. Um, so the idea is the further out you go, obviously the less certainty that you have. And particularly when we're talking about an agile project where there's a big backlog and then teams are able to pull things into the backlog. Um, there's only so far out that you can predict what will be accomplished. So, you know, we, we do our best here. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the teams and the different developers on Folio. And there's a number of different groups that um, provide development teams. And, you know, I was at a meeting earlier this year um, where we really said, you know, what, why do we keep talking about community versus non-community? Like we're all community. So we are trying deliberately to remind ourselves of that too. So um, we have different, uh, what we have called funding providers and different institutions that have been able to contribute development resources to Folio. Um, so first here we have EBSCO, which manages a lot of the EPAM teams working on really that core, what you'd think of as the integrated library system functionality, you know, your cataloging, acquisition, circulation. Um, but that's not all. I mean, they do a lot of things. Um, and so some of what we are hearing about that extended social support, that's all coming through the EPAM teams. Um, additionally, we have um, a lot of information here from some different uh, German consortia. And like I said, we may not have as much detail on everything. So, you know, these things, we, we welcome more information to help us make sure that we've got um, more detail. So Hebus and Index Data, they're gonna be working on, you know, reminder fees, add-ons and circulation, BNVolk, which is a knowledge integration and GBV. Their, their area of focus has been on the electronic resources management providing dashboards, um, and then also looking to, um, you know, widgets. Um, SIF, which is GBB plus index data, that focus has been on the union catalog for um, German consortia and, and handling their requirements as well as on the harvester. Um, additionally, there's a 
number of institutional teams that come from American and uh, European institutions and consortia. And these teams are focusing on areas around workflow, calendars, and some just core ILS enhancements um, for things that their institutions need, and then they get contributed to the project. There's also individual developers that are out there. They come from multiple institutions. They can join in teams where they're as needed, where they have interest, and then enhance um, features across all functional areas. Uh, Leipzig, the University Library Leipzig, and that got cut off, but that should say knowledge integration. They have focused on open access and usage statistics, and also um, more recently a number generator. And also um, knowledge integration, Duke and GBV have been working on a serials management module. So that may not be a full list of teams, but that gives you a sense of all the different groups that are working to develop Folio. Um, and then we move on to our 18 month outlook. And um, I'd like to thank the different um, funding providers for teams that have supplied some of this information. Uh, and again, if you think there are things on here that don't look what you expect, uh, this roadmap is still a work in progress, but we wanted to provide something that would give people a high level sense of where Folio is going in the next uh, 18 months based on information in JIRA, based on our conversations with the funding provider and based on other presentations that have been done elsewhere. So we have some updates to the core platform. Uh, there is a new list app that's being developed that provides some um, query functionality across different apps within Folio. There's enhancements with bulk edit, allowing bulk edit suppression and deletion. There's consortia support workflow engine integration and extensions to the dashboard to work beyond electronic resources management. In the area of acquisitions, um, some features that will be coming are to be able to process invoices against previous fiscal years. We actually just heard um, from the Library of Congress them mentioning that that was one of their gaps. Um, also just um, implemented within orders is a version history so that you can see changes in your orders and your uh, purchase order lines and what's happened there. Uh, a better connection and display of additional information, well, not really a better connection, but just being able to see more order information and inventory. And then the aforementioned serials management publication patterns getting rolled into the acquisitions process. Within circulation, we expect to see improvements to the request workflow, title level requests potentially, uh, patron notices enhancements, um, enhancements in fines and fees to be able to look at actual costs and um, reminder fees. Within ERM, uh, there's work being done on the global open knowledge base, a synchronization rewrite, um, search implementation review, general performance improvements, and more support for task lists and checklists. Um, looking specifically at the 18 month outlook in metadata, as this is an area where Folio has a lot of new developments that should occur over the next 18 months. Within cataloging, there will be cataloging workflow improvements. Uh, there's been a lot of work that's under, been undertaken with MARC authorities. The linking from the MARC authority to um, inventory is occurring. Uh, search and browse, and browse improvements and improved in-app reporting. Uh, data import, and there are several sessions that we'll be talking about data import here at WolfCon that will go into some more detail here. Um, the migration process, improvements with that, some just architectural and workflow improvements for data import, scaling and performance improvements, and then improvements in the business logic of data import. Within linked data, another one that you heard a lot about this morning from the Library of Congress, um, the ability to manage bib frame records, uh, the ability for entity management for authorized access points. So this, um, so that those are enhancements that are expected. And lastly, with data export on metadata, uh, performance and scaling improvements and being able to suppress selected fields from data export. Uh, we have some anticipated new apps. Some of these things have already come to the product council. Some of them we anticipate will be coming to the product council. I mentioned the, uh, the list app. We were recently introduced to a prototype of it, and I believe there's a couple sessions here at WolfCon that the list app will pull together data using query parameters, create lists that will be cross app and across record types, and, and sort of help support workflows. Um, the workflows app. Uh, this is work that's coming um, from Texas A&M. 
and now support the creation of workflows from the Folio user interface, supporting interaction with active workflows across all Folio applications, and supporting multiple workflow engine provider implementations. Uh, the Harvester app, which is um, a, a new concept, not yet uh, discussed within the product council, but something that we anticipate will be coming up, will support the data flow from the union catalog to inventory, and will integrate with this Harvester admin functionality. Um, lastly, there is an app that's called Service Interaction, which so far will be providing number generator functionality, but will it is expected to grow to be a settings app for a number of cross app module settings that otherwise do not have a home within Folio. All right, um, now I'm going to turn it over to Jen to talk about some dashboards as another way to be able to view the roadmap. And I should say we are, we're going to handle all the questions at the end just because we're kind of covering a wide range of different things. And so then we'll, um, we'll loop back to questions. Hello. Um, so the dashboards, I'm going to look there. Um, we have worked up a wiki page within the PC space to host links to JIRA dashboards. So this touches a little bit on the issue about including what development is included. So these are the Folio JIRA dashboards. So only work that's being tracked in Folio would be in these. Um, whoops, but I really wanna look at the slides too. So, before we look at them, I just want to say these are definitely still in progress. Feedback on them is welcome. When we took on the dashboards, we kind of had some requirements around that. Um, and one of them is that we, we really want to use all this data that the POs and the teams are already generating without asking them to do a lot of extra work. So we did meet with the POs. We kind of talked about how they mark up their JIRA issues and what data points are in there that we can use for reporting. So the POs have an existing label list. And as Jesse was saying in chat, we are gonna upload these slides so you can go and take a look at it. Um, but that label list kind of maps to the SIGs. And so using those labels, you can kind of gather up all the issues that a particular SIG might be interested in. And so that those labels, um, are the basis for the table of dashboards. The dashboards are also an attempt to kind of represent and deal with what we sort of call the level problem, or it kind of comes up all the time. Um, anytime you're trying to explain something where you've got high level and low level, and the dashboards kind of try to bridge that. So we're seeing really high level roadmap from Kristen. When you talk about the UX prods, they're sort of a mid-level roadmap. And then of course the developers and the POs um, have stories in JIRA that are like super detailed, uh, as much detail as you could pro possibly want. Um, and so with the dashboard, you can kind of get to those lower levels if you're interested. Um, but still see the big picture if you want to. The dashboards are also dependent. We were talking a little earlier about sort of connecting up to the release calendar. So the dashboards are, are actually quite dependent on the release calendar because the POs have a point in time for each release where they have to set their scope. And so if you look at the release calendar, you can see that date and you know that at that point, the dashboard for that release really is the PO's best guess. Doesn't mean things won't change, but that's kind of where they say, yeah, this is what we think is gonna be in the release. Uh, and so when we look at the dashboard, you'll see that the very next release is quite full. <laughs> and then the release after that is, is quite empty. Um, and for the dashboards, we I have only put in two releases um, because that's, I felt sort of mapped to that um, certainty process for the POs. So each release, the dashboards will have to get updated. One of the 
things that this group will have to do is figure out how to hand this off to a maintenance group. Um, so the filters will need to get rolled from being for the poppy release to the Q release to the R release. And we'll also need to maintain some communication with the product owners because we're really representing their practices. Um, in addition to the dashboards that the that this group is creating, we are linking to the um, the ones created by Kalila, the lead product owner, uh, and the ones created uh, by the release manager, uh, which is a calendar, not a dashboard. Um, but both of those really give you context um, for what's in Jira. So now let's see if I can get back. Well, maybe if I should click it again. Okay, so uh, up at the top are the, the ones maintained by Kalila and the release managers. And then down here, uh, we have more functional area dashboards coming, but I'm gonna show you the metadata management one. And you, know, you can do all of this stuff in a different style. I ended up going with um, pie charts for these, but one thing we can also think about because they're organized around the labels in those SIGs is like the SIG can work with us and talk about what they want there and get trained on maintenance if that's something the SIGs are interested into. Um, so what we're looking at here again are those different levels. So the first pie chart is the UX prods. So basically this is gonna show you where the UX prods are concentrated for things that are labeled metadata management. So we know there's a lot going on with consortia. We were hearing about that earlier. It's got the most issues. We know there's a lot going on in data import. It's got a lot of issues. Um, so these are the epics, which again are set up by the product owners. And so uh, if something doesn't have an epic, then it shows up as none. Um, but so you can see where that work is, is concentrated. And then this for the issues, these are not UX prods. These are the actual stories and bugs for individual modules. And so in this case, I came up with what I considered was the <laughs> metadata management list of modules. And again, that can be a conversation with the SIG for what their list of modules is. And then you can see the distribution of the issues amongst those modules. And then last is just a kind of type um, so it's just showing, showing stories and bugs because those are the two issue types that we use. Uh, and then there's one, so, and then there's this, the Q release, uh, which I said is sparsely populated sort of right now. Um, and then I'm, I'm almost done. I just wanted to show we have this one miscellaneous dashboard, which will tie into the things that are coming up. Uh, and this is specifically about unscheduled issues, and apparently I didn't share it. But you'll be able to click on it. I'll fix the sharing. Uh, because one of the things that folks are interested in is what still needs to get scheduled. And that'll have a similar breakdown of labels and um, of areas so you can see where that work is that's unscheduled. All right. That was really fast. I'm always happy to talk about Jira if you want to. Hi, everyone. And I'm now having a look with you at the prioritization for the longer view. Because one of the tasks um, that or one of the topics that we're discussing is prioritization. So manage the folio feature prioritization process. Um, and what components should this process address is uh, setting priorities and um, like um, we have done this in different ways in the past. So we started to, to prioritize via JIRA. Then we had this pointing exercise with the spreadsheet. And um, all of these ways had some challenges or were, weren't seen as appropriate anymore at some point in time. And um, there was a, a prioritization working group tasked to find a new way of prioritizing features. And we have now um, a concept that has been um, created by them. And you have a link here. I don't want to follow that right now. So if we have questions concerning that um, process, we can have a look at it later. But um, this group has um, 
has discussed new ways and said it would be good to, to have the six be uh, more involved into the whole project um, process and talked about some tools that could be used. And in the next slides, we will have a look at what we're doing and how we are continuing their work. So um, six priorities, we wanna definitely empower the six to help set priorities because they are the experts in, in setting priorities. They are discussing the features and requirements all the time. And that's why um, we thought it is a, definitely a good idea to give them more power. Um, and the institutional priorities in the path, we had a lot of uh, like regularly some processes where institutions were to prioritize features. Um, Maybe we can include that a bit more into the SIG prioritization um, because the SIGs will work in a synchronous way when they discuss in meetings, but nevertheless in an asynchronous way via tools where everybody can take part no matter whether they are being in that meetings and or not. And I want to note that we are not finished in deciding how this will all work and this will be a process where we test and then give feedback at all of us and see how we can make progress there. So steps, um, next steps are that, that we want six to define their top priorities and those priorities should be added to JIRA. Um, we have now a PO rank there, we had institutional ranks for each institution and we now want to have a SIG rank with a calculated total of the prioritization of the different six so that you can see it in JIRA and everyone can see it there. Um, then we have a lot of features where we have development teams that are responsible. We have a lot of features where we have no deaf teams who are assigned. And it would be good to have a, a top 10 list of prior priorities for those features as well, because if we find new teams or um, we could say, okay, here is the top priority. It would be good if you do that. Or um, if we see that the community needs something very urgently without a deaf team, can take hopefully care that we find, we could at least try. Um, and then the PC wants to work strongly um, with the six and to regularly walk and talk through the different development areas and see what the progress is to keep the roadmap really up to date, which is important. Possible tools, um, the, this prioritization uh, team that was tasked to talk about, about the a new process um, came up with the idea to use Airtable, which is a very good tool and is used in different areas and institutions already for prioritizing. But when we then talked to the Airtable sales team and with the community council and found out how the pricing is going on, we now have to say that this is quite uncertain whether we can use Airtable because to, to prioritize each six member would require a seat and that's very costly. So we are stepping back a bit from using Airtable at the moment. Um, another idea is using spreadsheets um, with the top priorities per SIG. So each SIG, because they prioritize in a more regular basis, they would then maybe have a list of some, some features, not too many, um, if you do that regularly, and then um, we could feed that back into JIRA, hopefully, and working via spreadsheets would mean that everyone, not only people meeting in the six, can take part because you can work on them asynchronously as well. And surveys is another option, um, and those could be used for institutional prioritization as well if we want to do that in future. And again, you can list your top 10 priorities, and this is again possible via asynchronous um, participation to invite everyone to take part in that. And I think that's the prioritization part, and we are now at the challenges and next steps. Thank you, Martina. Um, I've also been monitoring chat just to make sure we don't have questions coming up there, but um, challenges and next steps. So among the challenges, uh, a challenge we've had for a long time in trying to build effective, useful roadmaps for uh, the Folio project is that the project is both the vendor and the consumer in many cases. And often um, a, 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 a roadmap is often sort of a marketing tool, like showing this is what's going to be in your system at some point. We both know too little and too much at the same time about kind of what's going on in the Folio project as active participants as well. That makes it um, a challenge to find that what's that balance of either 
uh, a good overview of of sort of keywords of things to come versus uh, good detail that lets people uh, really make decisions about when they're going to implement or um, is this, does this feature look like what I'm going to want to have? And um, I think as, as we've been looking through these current ways of viewing what's going on in the project, I think we're starting to overcome this challenge um, and um, and it'll be mostly as we start to document out how to, what, what is it that you're seeing here and what does it mean? Um, I think we'll sort of hopefully see the, see this in the rear mirror soon as a challenge. Um, distributed development. There are a bunch of different teams working with different stakeholders, funding them, different groups of people influencing what's going on with them. And we don't always know who they are, or what they're working on. Um, this has been, uh, this challenge has been sort of reduced greatly by conversations and actually just getting in touch with um, the people that do know uh, more of the detail of what is going on, what is expected there, and uh, piece that we're going to have to build a, a system to kind of keep having those conversations over time. Um, projecting, really putting out like, what are we, we it's hard enough to see what's going to be two releases from now. Um, uh, in a way that we can communicate to people to start to build expectations for their own implementations or their own. That's always going to be hard. The roadmaps we see or the marketing tool from a vendor are pretty, like, you, either there's not very much detail there, so they make some progress. They say, we did this thing, even if it's not what you're looking for. Um, so those high-level views aren't going to tell you exactly what's happening and, and exactly when as you start to drill down for that those shorter term views which are the the next lease maybe a little bit about the following one that's when you can start to see what you might be more likely to actually expect to have happen there and really separating those two pieces um and having separate conversations really with the the powers that be over those uh, over what's being built is going to help us um get a better view of that i think um, and then prioritization, like what's the right level of granularity to prioritize? I've been in the project a long time um, and worked through giant spreadsheets of what, 1100 uh, rows of a spreadsheet trying to decide which uh, like distributed 100 points across these or like to figure out which are the most important or uh, mark these anywhere from we don't need it up to we have to have this before we go live. There's still things marked as Cornell must have this before we go live that are not done and we've been live for several years. So take that as you will. But uh, the level of granularity of those things, um, we, we got over them and, and we're fine. So um, the level of granularity of each of those things that's described varies a huge amount. Um, and uh, one time we voted on epics. Um, and again, those epics actually, some, some of them were a pretty small thing. Some of them were a pretty big thing. And being able to weight those against each other was pretty tough with like with that different size of uh, essentially the scale that they represented. Um, last incarnation of our team came up with some themes and sub themes based on some conversations we had with teams. And um, we tried to size those to be something that is reasonably comparable to another theme or sub theme. And um, again, it kind of ran into problems there, like not necessarily describing things as the way people might be viewing them. So, um, so was like the figuring out sort of how to prioritize these different sized things. But, um, uh, but again, I think we'll surface um, ways for people to think about that as we push out prioritization processes. Um, and some next steps are, are are publishing the roadmap. I mean, getting this information actually out of a slideshow and into the wiki. Um, with some descriptions of what it means, what it doesn't mean, and um, and uh, starting to get a lot more feedback about it uh, that way. And um, uh, implementing this prioritization process that Martina talked about, actually putting it in place, seeing what we can do with it, seeing what we learn out of that to evolve it into something that um, institutions, vendors, uh, interested parties can feel like they're able to put their stamp at least on some priorities and feel like um, that surface 
to to people that are really deciding then on the ground who's building what at what time. Um, and then uh, putting in a process for ongoing updates to all these different moving parts um, so that we are having regular conversations um, with POs, uh, dev teams, stakeholder groups, uh, SIGs, and engaging them in the process without also taking too much of their time away from other activities. Um, and hopefully in a way that those conversations help them actually build their priority list um, to drive Folio into the future. And uh, now we've got some time for discussion and feedback. Uh, any questions from the room? Or comments? I think this is more of a comment because I don't think there's an answer. I just want to acknowledge the the challenge with, I've been thinking a lot recently about are these SIGs really the right way for us to be even organizing our community anymore? But then I think about, well, if the SIG is going to be the source of community prioritization, then they are very important. But thinking about the metadata management SIG, which I'm most familiar with, so often we don't have, I, I won't even say we would want consensus, but we can't come to a general agreement on what's most important because we have so many different institutions with so many different needs. So I just want to acknowledge the, the challenges that, that, that we're all facing with figuring out what should be done next when there is obviously more that's needed than we can do at one time. So trying to decide whose need is most urgent is is really, it's a, it's a wicked problem, but thank you for taking this on. Terrence. Um, my, my question is around new anticipated apps, um, which I think I came in as, as the slide was up. I guess, how? I've been on the wiki having a quick squiz at how to pitch something. How easy is it to get through that process of like, if somebody has an idea, I mean, I've seen several ideas, my institution has a few as well, but let's just say I want to do something to go from that point to eventually it's appearing on, on your slide as least an approval. Pro How easy is that? Because it, that seems a little bit opa opaque to me. I don't know if this is the right forum to ask that question. Maybe it's not, but I'm trying to find the right forum for it. Hi. Um, I think that is a question that we are working on, and there is a session, the very last session of WolfCon, where we will be talking about um, new apps and module review process between the uh, the PC and the TC. So one of the things in the product council that we want to encourage is if people have ideas that we learn about them early and then we could maybe put you in touch with people who are like, oh, you know what? We heard other people have those same ideas too. I think you brought up a really uh, good point this morning around um, time zones that we have grappled with but not solved in that if we don't have some opportunity to meet and discuss things like asynchronous can like sometimes you just can't do everything asynchronously, but we also can't, there's no like time zone that works uh, in a global environment. Um, so we would probably want to think about a, a way to work with um, a development team that maybe would be located in, in the not around New York Eastern time, right? As the kind of the central hub. Um, and then there is a, um, the, the technical council does a module review process that covers um, very specific technical requirements so that something can get put into a file release. And so this session will talk about what that whole process has been like. And then we're also going to, we're doing a little review of um, where it stands now and we're encouraging people to contribute ideas if there's ways that we can strengthen that process as well. Uh, and so the um, the new apps that are out there, they're ones that we've heard about at least um, initially, and most of which have, have actually already come to the product council, and some of which have actually um, been through the whole process as well. And so, um, you know, there's always things can come up, but that's where those came from. 
And uh, we've had varying degrees of success, I think, of somebody saying, hey, here's an idea that I'd like Folio to have or do. Um, and um, getting that from that person talking about it first to it actually being in Folio. Um, and uh, it's both one of the, I, I feel one of the great things about the project is that there are a lot of different people and places that might make that thing happen if they become aware of it. Um, and um, and a lot of different ways that sort of surfaced and, and become a reality. Um, single record import is the ability for uh, catalogers essentially to bring a record from OCLC, a single record from OCLC into the folio, into folio. And um, that didn't exist at one point. It was one of Cornell's needs and it was in a few other institutions, Chicago and Duke and Cornell, I think and Texas A&M uh, pulled funding together. Like, so we spec'd it out and then we pulled funding together and said, we all need this. Lots of other places do too, but let's stop with the four of us because we got enough money, we think, to make this happen. And so uh, got some people together, got some other feedback and then made that uh, happen and it engaged index data at the time uh, to build that. Um, in other places, the German libraries are a great example of, of looking at some big functionality pieces that they knew they needed and pooling funding across their networks uh, to uh, to build a full dev team, basically, or, or hire a full dev team to work on their um, their things. Um, other things have surfaced through people saying, hey, Folio needs this, and it's gotten prioritized, and it's worked its way on to EBSCO development lists because enough of their customers have needed it, or it's a, a piece of the bigger puzzle that's needed. Um, so one of the great things is a lot of this is happening in a lot of different ways. One of the challenges with that is somebody can say a great idea and it seems like it's going into the void and it might be for a while. And, um, I think as a project, we could do a better job at sort of at least surfacing those things, getting them where to a point where other institutions can prioritize them or me to it or start to crowdfund it or whatever, whatever might need to happen to, to actually build it. Um, I want to start off by saying thank you for everybody who's worked on this, this process. This can't have been easy. And there's a recurring challenge that's often spoken about on the project with prioritizing functionality where we don't necessarily have people or teams assigned to be able to achieve that. And so there's sometimes some despair in that conversation of what's the point. I think that's not true at all. I think this is a great example of there is a point. We have to outline what our priorities are as a community so we can see, do we already have resources devoted to those priorities? And if we don't, to do as as Jesse just described, an ad hoc, make that happen because we are the community and we are the ones who can put the resources towards these things if they're important to us. So, so thank you. I guess my two linked questions are, um, is there a time frame for sort of finishing version one of, of the process? And um, once it runs for a year or so, is there some sort of accountability that we have as a community plan to see how did that roadmap work out, reality versus expectation? Uh, we haven't picked an exact date of say, hey, this is ready, take a look. Um, but. Um, but yes, those are some. Those are some of, among our next steps too. Is to set up that timeline, and Kristen's probably got a better answer, and maybe even a date for you. I don't know. Well, what what I would like us to be able to do, I think, is um, to you know the, that very high level view um, to be able to get something like that out there, even on like the folio.org website, uh, because I think that 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 is kind of a, a marketing tool in a way like, hey, Folio is getting developed and we've got this great new folio.org website out here. We want to keep the information current. And then I think for people that are in the project, the dashboard route is going to be more useful in understanding, um, you know, that drilling down. And 
some of our job is going to, I think, be returning to this with every release to see like, okay, how can we bump out that 18 month outlook now that we're one release down? Um, and if we go to a different release model altogether, uh, then maybe we would need to revamp that even further. Um, Additionally, we've been talking in the product council about how to uh, strengthen our relationship with the SIGs. And I think if we're able to maybe change, um, like right now we have these regular meetings where we invite everyone from the SIGs to come and hear what other SIGs are doing. And that's helpful, but um, it's maybe not leading to some of the deeper conversations because then we at least it feels like things sometimes go along and then there's like an explosion somewhere um, because there was a problem that maybe was sort of aware of, but it wasn't getting addressed. So I think if we maybe can have like some, uh, like a cycle where we could say like, you know, we, we could talk to the SIGs on a deeper level for a longer period of time. And, and maybe even some of the issues like what Laura was saying, where well, metadata management, you know, where we, we can't even agree among ourselves. Like that's the type of feedback we could take to think about how can we make sure that we're supporting metadata management or that we're supporting diverse ways that different libraries are anticipating working with their metadata. Cause we're not, we're not coming up with a really uh, clean kind of, you know, one size fits all or even most, it sounds like. No, if other members of the team want to add. I would just say something to the prioritization. When are we, will we agree on that? There is no timeline either, but what we want to do is um, some, some sort of kind of testing. We um, always try to address one or two six to say, okay, would you be willing to test drive what we are looking for? For instance, working with a spreadsheet um, we had one um, SIG that was willing to test Airtable, for instance. So, and then we 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 give them some time, I don't know, six months or so, and then we receive their feedback and then we could see whether that's a good working way or whether we need to review that. So it's not, not easy to give a timeline. And what Laura said, I mean, we need to have a look at will the SIGs stay as they are? Are there differences? This is really a living thing and we need to adjust that every now and then. Uh, just one more plug on the dashboard. So the roadmap that we looked at is one way of doing the dashboard. For metadata management, we've also built a bug tracker dashboard, and that's in our meeting minutes for every week. So folks have a chance to go and look at it and see where things are. The support SIG, I know that they open their dashboard for every one of their meetings. And so getting these to a place where it's something the SIGs want to open on a regular basis, look at together um, and see where things are. And I think that the, you know, doing, doing a big push for input once a year can maybe sort of work for institutions, but it, it, um, everything else we do, we do in this agile way. And so uh, it makes sense to, to do that in our planning too, and not just try to do it once a year, a whole bunch of work. Question I'm answering now because it's one minute. I'm answering to say there's other sessions. <laughs> Any other questions here? In the other room? questions from the room or uh, from online? You said a, lot, a, a few things when you were, uh, Laura, you said a few things when you were talking and we liked you thanking us, but, and then I think we swung back around and touched on some of it. So are you satisfied? Okay. <laughs> All right. The answer is B. All of the above. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, thank you, my esteemed panelists as well.